Antony Gaudi was born in 1852 in Spain as the youngest of five children. He grew up to be an architect whose works reflect his distinctive and unique style. Throughout his lifetime, he remained extremely dedicated to his profession. And today, he is famous for a remarkable amount of works, including his ceramics, stained glass, carpentry, and ironwork forging. But possibly his most renowned masterpiece is La Sagrada Familia. The Sagrada Familia is one of the largest Roman Catholic churches in Barcelona, Spain. Gaudi thought when building it was to make an impact on the skyline, but nonetheless reflect his respect for God. In fact, his love for not only religion was displayed in the Sagrada Familia, but nature as well. Although the Sagrada Familia and red red trees are contrasting topics, there are connections prevalent between both of them. Similar to the long trunks of redwood trees, there are tall columns found in the church, and on its interior ceiling, structures are built in a way extremely similar to those of a redwood forest. We then apply these concepts from Gaudi's work into our own creation of a paper tree. In March of 2016, Renton Prep students initially started researching the Sagrada Familia, as well as various components related to it, including Spanish and math. Now in May, we have then stemmed off this research to create a new project revolved around the building of a paper and cardboard tree, inspired by Gaudi's love and incorporation of nature into his work. Additionally, we included themes from previous assignments, such as the use of recyclable materials from the Wally project, and concepts related to identity from the Seattle Art Museum Disguise project. As the tallest type of tree on earth, redwood trees grow to typically be about 300 to 350 feet tall, or at the most, 379. They generally live for 2,000 years and are treasured resources to humans for building purposes. In order to live, they reside in moderate coastal climates with frequent fog to prevent drought and dry spells. Redwood trees consist of humified leaves, bark, senile leaves, a stem, and fresh leaves towards the top. In addition to facts about the redwood trees, we also zoned in on their history and uses throughout time. We learned not only that they've been around for 240 million years, but that they were used to build the Transcontinental Railroad and houses, furniture, and other goods for people during the California Gold Rush. One particular site provided information about the typical dimensions of redwood trees. We took this information, plugged it into a few equations for cylinders, and found the approximate minimum and maximum surface areas and volumes for the trees. Lastly, we looked for more inspiration online on paper or cardboard tree projects previously done. This concluded our research phase, and we are now ready to start building. These sketches are what we base our tree off of. This sketch shows the frame of the tree that we use for structure. This sketch is the final tree with leaves. But there was a change of plans. We originally planned on constructing a redwood tree, but after a little more thinking and research, we came to the consensus that it would be a little easier to construct a birch tree instead. We decided to decorate our tree with leaves made out of tissue paper in different continents from two spare mats we had. This was meant to represent the theme of identity, which carried through from our first theme project. Everyone comes from somewhere and we were able to represent that through our tree. Once we had our overall plan, we began to construct the base of our tree using both cardboard tubes and boxes. To get the overall shape or outline of the trunk, we attached two cylinder shaped cardboard tubes together using tape. Next, we constructed the roots to give the tree a little bit of stability using cut out cardboard tubes and flattened cardboard boxes. Once the base was finished, it was now time to construct the branches. Once again, we used cardboard tubes. This time we cut slits to make them look more like a branch. In addition to this, we also rolled up newspaper into bundles. When the structure of the tree was completed, we covered it completely in newspaper. Not only did this give the tree a birchy look, but it also added some support to it as well. But towards the end of the second phase, there was a little dilemma. The tree had fallen due to an imbalance of weight. The team looked over and noticed that the base of the tree was smaller and lighter than the top of the tree, causing it to fall. During this time, we got to the root of the problem. To balance out the weight, we must add more newspaper bundles to add support to the base of the tree. Now, it was time for the finishing touches. During this time, the final tweaks and adjustments were made. The leaves, continents, and other decorations were also placed onto the tree. Although this was a very quick project, 
we were able to connect the subjects of science, technology, engineering, art, and math by building this tree and researching not only the history behind it, but subjects connected to it as well. We worked with skills of problem solving, collaboration, and communication, as well as time management. Through this tree, we were able to display the skills, ingenuity, and uniqueness within Renton Prep.